Most of you are probably aware that RAM speed does have something of a bearing on gaming performance. Some of you might be aware that this is especially true for systems running Ryzen chips as opposed to Intel. But that got me thinking, how much of a difference does using faster RAM make for gaming performance, and how much does a gamer stand to gain? So we've established that slower RAM can bottleneck your gaming performance, but why is that? The reason is that, especially with Ryzen chips, but with Intel chips as well, a certain memory speed is required for the processor to work at peak efficiency. If the speed is too low, then the CPU will not be able to operate as fast as it wants to because it cannot pull data from the RAM fast enough. So what happens is that in games where you are CPU bound, you might be getting lower FPS than you would be getting if you were using a faster RAM kit. Now this is especially important when you consider the fact that faster RAM is not generally much more expensive than RAM that's a lot slower. So now that we know more about how RAM affects your gaming performance, it's time to answer the question, how much does faster RAM affect your gaming performance? And to find that out, I'm going to go down to my local micro center and buy a 3600 megahertz kit of DDR4, 16 gigabytes to be exact, and replace my current 3000 megahertz kit in my system right now. Be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm back and I settled on this 3600 megahertz kit of two times eight gigabyte sticks. It's Trident Z from G Skill to be exact. The specs of my system before changing the RAM are as follows. While the RAM kit I have currently in my system was marketed as 3000 megahertz, I have never been able to get it to run above 2933. I guess my system really just does not like 3000 megahertz. You will notice also that I did not apply any overclock to either the graphics card or the CPU because I want to go for more of a mainstream scenario. Now I'm going to go ahead and test four titles, CSGO, Valorant, Overwatch, and Fortnite. You might be thinking, why so many eSport titles? And the reason is because all four of these titles are quite lightweight in the graphics department, which means we should remain CPU bound at all times, especially with the 2070 Super that's in my build. And this is perfect for the objective of this video, since by being CPU bound, we're gonna be able to see a greater difference between different RAM speeds, since RAM speed affects mostly CPU, as I said before. I'm going to start by testing using the 2933 megahertz kit that's already installed in my system. First up, CSGO. With the memory at 2933 megahertz, with the slower kit that I have, the average was 199 FPS, max 388, 1% low 102, 0.1% low 49. Then when I switch to the kit at 3466 megahertz, the average was 210, the max 391, 1% low, 106, 0.1% low, 25. So you probably noticed that I said 3466 instead of 3600. And the reason is that I could not get this kit stable at 3600, even though there is an XMP for it in the BIOS, just like there was for my 3000 one, and I couldn't get that one stable at 3000 either. In case you guys don't know, XMP is extreme memory profile. You go into the BIOS and you set it so that your memory could actually run at a speed at least closer to the advertised speed, if not at the advertised speed in this case. This just shows that the speed on the box is not that meaningful. So if you buy fast RAM, I recommend you test it and make sure it can run at a speed that you're satisfied with before the return period expires, so that if you're not satisfied, you can always return it. But I doubt that will happen, because usually if it doesn't hit that speed, it at least gets relatively close to the advertised speed. Let's talk about these statistics, though. First of all, I know the low is kind of low, especially for the 3466. I'm not sure why it was lower. It did feel a little bit smoother to me. There wasn't any stutters or anything. So the 1% and 0.1% lows were not that significant in this case. 
You're probably wondering why I even bother to include maximum FPS. It's not something that is usually seen as a relevant stat. But the reason I included it in this case is just because I wanted to show at some point what is actually the maximum potential that the CPU can achieve by using faster RAM. And I thought that this would be a good way of showing it. Let me know what you guys think of that inclusion down in the comments below. So as you can see, there's a difference of 11 in the average FPS. It's not huge, but it's also not insignificant, especially since the only price you have to pay for to get that extra 11 FPS is buying faster RAM. Next up, we've got Fortnite. I should mention that all gameplay for the three of these games was captured while playing at 1080p. Not that the resolution matters that much when we're CPU bound anyway. At 2933 MHz, the average was 196, maximum 275, 1% low 55, and 0.1% low 11. Going up to 3466 MHz, we see average of 227, max of 282, 1% low of 65, and 0.1% low of 16. So now we're seeing an even greater difference than in CSGO, over 30 FPS difference when going from slower RAM to the faster RAM. That is a very solid difference, even when we're already at about 200 FPS, and this could really feel totally different to some people. It did feel smoother to me as well. And again here, the 0.1% lows I would not consider to be that significant. The abysmally low 0.1% lows I think had to do with the fact that I was running Fortnite from a mechanical hard drive, so stuff was loading in all the time, and there was some stutter because of that. Lastly, here we got Valorant. Please excuse my skills, guys, or lack thereof, rather. This isn't a game I play very often, and by not very often, I mean I only ever play it to benchmark. In Valorant at 2933 MHz RAM, the average was 195 FPS, max 262, 1% low 124, 0.1% low 69. At 3466 megahertz, the average was 239, the max 291, the 1% low 161, and the 0.1% low 97. So here we see an even greater difference in average FPS, a whopping 44 FPS in difference. This is definitely the kind of difference you guys who are into eSport titles would care about, since it can be quite noticeable. Of course, you must remember that the difference would be even greater if I had actually been able to get the RAM to the advertised speed of 3600 megahertz. Those of you running Intel CPUs might have less trouble getting your RAM to run at its advertised high speed than those on AMD like I am. I just want to add though that while this difference would be very significant in most eSport titles, there wouldn't be any difference in titles where you are GPU bound since the RAM speed is not going to affect the GPU's performance. So now that we've seen how much of a difference using faster RAM can make on your gaming performance, should you go out right now and buy the fastest RAM kit you can possibly find? Probably not. And the reason is because one, exceptionally fast RAM kits tend to be very expensive, and two, and this is a generalization, but when most of us game, most of the time we are GPU bound, not CPU bound. And taking that into account, the performance gains of switching to faster memory does not justify the cost of going out and buying a brand new kit of RAM when you already have one in your system. Especially since a 16 gig kit of DDR4, 3600 megahertz even, can still set you back Back a solid hundred bucks. And that's money that you could better spend by putting it aside for a graphics card upgrade in the future. That being said, for those of you who are building a brand new system and do not currently have a kit of DDR4 RAM, like maybe your old system used DDR3 or you're just building a new system for the first time and you've never had a gaming PC, then I recommend that you get 3600 megahertz kit of DDR4 as opposed to something like 3000 megahertz. And that's especially true that I recommend that if you are building a PC for eSport titles. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like down below, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.